What's up, everybody? I apologize for the background noise. Uh, normally, I would just turn the truck off to make these videos, but it is like negative, like 10 degrees. It's freezing outside, so I gotta keep the heat running or I will die. I am a Florida boy. I am not used to this bullshit ass fucking negative weather. I don't know how y'all live out here, but God bless you, because I can't do it. Negative 12 was the coldest thing I was, I was, it was negative 12, it's negative 10. So it should start warming up soon because it's getting like 5.20 in the morning. The sun's gonna start coming up soon. But yeah. Hell no. <laughs> it was so cold I opened my door and the first breath of air I took sent me into a coughing fit because it was so cold. No. Anyway. I've got a double whammy for y'all. This I do. I've got two stories, two urban legend stories for you guys. Um, one's from a lovely lady who works at a truck stop. And the other one is from another fellow trucker. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, bad in about 10-15 minutes, but hopefully my auxiliary heating unit will kick on here in a minute. Maybe that'll be enough. Anyway, so I did not know this one. Apparently, it's a very popular trucker urban legend to never park next to a graveyard. So, Can I help you? That's what I thought. Dude was just staring at me for like no fucking reason. Alright. Anyway, so. This guy told me. While we were, he was getting himself a sandwich and I was getting a sandwich and we were just kind of shooting the shit. And I told him, hey, I got a YouTube channel. You know, I tell trucker stories, urban legends, scary stories, you know, you got any, any good ones that you wouldn't mind me putting on my channel? He's like, oh, I got one for you. And I was like, let it rip. So, we're sitting there waiting for our sandwiches to get made. And he tells me one of the creepiest stories I have ever fucking heard. So this is back when trucking was a little bit more Wild West-ish. You also gotta bear with me, guys. I'm very tired. I've been awake for like a day and a half at this point. I couldn't sleep last night. Um, what did he say? It was 1973 he said this happened to him. There we go. Um, it's getting cold fast. 1973. He was exhausted. It was like 12 o'clock at night, and I guess he said he was driving through somewhere near uh, some place. I think it was Boston, he said. I'm pretty sure it started with a B. I'm pretty sure it was Boston. And he's driving through this uh, medium sized town, and there were some trucker parking spots uh, right across the street from this graveyard. And he didn't think about it at the time, but he said, looking back, he found it weird. There were five spots. They were all empty. His first thought was, oh, you know, what great fortune. I found parking at this time of night. Never stopping to wonder, why are these spots empty? So, he parks up for the night. Closes everything down, goes in the back take us, uh, you know, go to bed. 
he locked his doors. He closed his curtains. I don't close my curtains at night because there's nothing up front worth stealing from my truck. So I lock my doors, but I don't close my curtains. I don't care that much. But he closed his curtains. He closed his curtain back here, you know, privacy curtain. He laid down and he was going to go to bed. He said about an hour after he laid down, he just could not sleep. He was exhausted, but he just could not fall asleep. And he swears that around 3 o'clock in the morning, he heard what sounded like a bunch of people basically slapping the side of his truck. You know, like, banging on it. Like, on the trailer and the truck. At first, he thinks, okay, maybe it's just the wind, you know, whatever. It wasn't loud enough to, like, startle him. Though it was weird, but being as tired as he was, he just didn't have the energy to care. About another hour later, he finally drifted off, and he gets woken up to the passenger door to his cab opening. And the light turning on. Absolutely horrified. He just laid there quietly. And back then, like I said, a bit more Wild West, he grabbed his gun and he just waited. Nothing happened. So he opens the curtains, checks his truck. There's no one in his truck. And his door was locked. He swore he locked his doors. Yeah, so something opened up the passenger door, turned on one of the lights, which I'm really surprised they had those back in the 70s, but whatever. Whatever the equivalent of the indoor cab light was. And yeah, nothing there. Nothing stolen. Nothing moved. Just the doors open. Lights on. And he thought he was so exhausted that he was just losing his mind, so he closes the door. And he decides, you know what? Someone's fucking with me. I'm gonna move. So he drove for about another two hours, found different parking, got his sleep. And it wasn't until he woke up in the morning and he was driving back that way and he realized, I parked right next to a huge cemetery. And it was literally right across the street. And, like I said, he didn't realize that apparently, for a lot of the old head truckers, it's common knowledge, you don't park next to a graveyard. And the other thing he said that freaked me out, that really creeped me out, was he said that when he checked his trailer and everything, there were handprints all over his truck all over his truck and the trailer ranging from child size to adult size on all different levels of like human sized reach on his trucks so, like halfway from the trailer down was just covered in areas where the dust had been disturbed from people slapping their hands on the truck this is he said it was somewhere near Boston or in Boston I don't know that's creepy And he said he never parked next to a graveyard again. I don't know what it is about trucking, man. Something, uh, maybe it's something spiritual about it or whatever. Which I could actually kind of understand. But it, apparently it attracts things. I don't know. But I don't know if he just had a bad experience or if that's just an overall, hey, if you're a trucker, don't do this. So, yeah. He said that was the only creepy, like, unexplainably paranormal-ish thing that had ever happened to him in his whole time driving. And he was about to retire, too. He was a cool dude. He was giving me some pointers. Man, I don't know how they did trucking back in the day, man. Like, we have cell phones for entertainment, music, movies, you know. I can't imagine doing this job driving for... 
Now they drove a lot longer because they had paper logs, so they could kind of fudge the numbers a bit to drive longer. I can't imagine driving a full shift and then just having nothing to do. If there's nothing around you to do when you're in your, there's just nothing to do. They couldn't call, they had the radio, but they couldn't really like call other truckers like we can now with our headsets where we can just get on the phone with a fellow trucker and talk for hours about nothing just to help the time go by. I don't know how they did it, man. And it makes me laugh. They had trouble finding parking back then. There's a hell of a lot more trucks on the road now. Like I've mentioned in many of these videos, they did a study in 2022. There are 12 trucks on the road for every one legal parking spot. It's ridiculous. You think they would have improved it over the years considering there are more trucks. Whatever. Second story. This one was also spine tinglingly weird. I was talking to the cashier lady at the TA, and I asked her, there was no one in line, it was like freaking three in the morning, because I always somehow end up getting stuck driving at night, which I do not like, but it is better for traffic and making time, but after a while it is exhausting, because it's basically working the night shift, and I hate it, but that's just the way my loads have been coming in lately. So, she said that her dad, was a trucker in the late 80s, and there was a, 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 excuse me, a time he was driving through Louisiana, and he said it was about, about 6 o'clock in the morning, the sun was just coming up, it was still dark out though, and he was just zoning out, driving, and, uh, he, like me, he needed glasses to drive, so he was, he, t he had taken off his glasses for a moment to, like, let his eyes rest a little bit. I can drive without my glasses, too. I can't read the road signs, but I can, I can drive perfectly safe, but, um, I need them to read the road signs far enough down the way that I can actually react to them, but if I'm driving down an area that I know, I don't need my glasses. I think I just, I've gotten so accustomed to wearing them, I just never take them off. Unless I'm going to bed. Um, so he's driving down this back road somewhere in Louisiana. And he sees something on the road up ahead of him. It's really small. And it seems to be crawling across the road. So he hits the brakes kind of hard and slows down. Thinking maybe it's a wounded animal, a dog. He doesn't know. And he gets closer and closer and closer. And... He finally realizes it looks like a baby. Like a child in the road crawling across the highway. Now, it gets fucking hot in Louisiana. And it's on the asphalt, so he's thinking, oh, oh my god. So he, of course, pops the brakes and he gets out of the truck and he runs over to it and goes to pick it up. But when he got close enough, he realized it wasn't a baby. It was a baby doll. And something was pulling it towards the woods to the left of the highway. There was a string wrapped around its neck. And something off in the woods was slowly just pulling it towards the woods. He said he got back in his truck, or she told me that he got back in his truck and he ran that thing over and hauled ass. Maybe not a truck or urban legend, but I have heard a story or two about the, the highway baby of people trying to get truckers to stop so they could get, you know, rob them, kill them, whatever. But the one that made this one so creepy was that's a lot of string and he said he couldn't see what it was it was so deep in the woods that he couldn't see what was pulling the string that's fucking weird dude yes the highway baby one is a, is a very popular one about people 
putting props in the road, be it uh, mannequins, baby dolls, uh, whatever, to get truckers to stop on desolate roads to help whoever's in the road, and they get jumped. It's very dangerous out here for truckers. I mean, if you steal this truck right now, you just stole 140 grand, not including my trailer or whatever's in my trailer. I mean, you get lucky enough and steal the right truck, you might drive off with like $1.5 million in a you think somebody won't kill you for that kind of money? You're wrong. When I used to work security, man, there were security guards getting shot left and right for fucking people trying to steal cars. And the security guard would catch them or try to stop them. They'd get shot right there. Because even if you stole a fucking Toyota Corolla, it didn't matter. Because the parts alone are worth thousands of dollars. And people have no problem killing for that kind of money. So... But... The, I can just imagine the the realization when you're right on top of it, realizing it's fake and something's luring it into the what, what the fuck? Hell no, man! I would have <laughs> I would have done what he did. I'd have made sure to run it over and keep trucking. Ah, bro! <sighs> I heard in Mexico, it's common that uh, people will roll bicycles into the highway to get cars and trucks to stop and then they'll rob people so that you, know, you think you hit somebody on a bike because you just see a bike suddenly uh, nah, it's very common, you'll see there's videos of it on YouTube, you can find it of truckers, just a bicycle will just roll right in front of them and they'll just fucking plow right over it and not even slow down because they know oh hell no <laughs> mm -mm. but uh yeah, I'm going to try and take a nap. Hopefully, uh, I never thought I would say this, but hopefully they'll take their time loading this trailer and I won't have to readjust it or anything. There's nothing more annoying than thinking you did a good job parking and then they're like, hey, can you move it like an inch to the left? And you're just like, oh, bro, come on. <laughs> but, you yeah. know, careful out there guys there's a lot of weird people and even weirder forces at power that are out there forces at power blah, 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 forces at play out there that are there's some weird stuff man and again I've always been a skeptic I mean it's very easy for me to look at some of these people and just be like yeah you were really tired and you're probably fucking crazy are you sure you weren't drinking or smoking but these guys seem pretty genuine when they tell these stories, man. And embellished or not, or fake or not, they're good stories. But yeah, apparently the don't park next to a graveyard is a commonly known one for the old heads. And the baby, uh, the road babies, they call them road babies, but it could be anything. It could be a bicycle, it could be a baby doll, it could be a mannequin, it could be a puppet, anything. Just to get the trucker to stop. But yeah. All right, guys, that's the double whammy for you. Have a great night. Uh, I, I I do have another one for you guys. I'll try to make it soon. It's another one similar to the woman in white, but this one apparently is the woman in white version for truck stops exclusively. It's a truck stop urban legend that I didn't even know existed. But uh, yeah, I'll be telling that one next, if I remember. <laughs> All right, y'all, have a good, no, at this point, have a good morning. Thank <sighs> you.